This is a question for the Treasurer. In the Employment White Paper, the government says productivity growth must be the key driver of improvements in living standards over the long term. We have an extremely complex industrial relations system, made more complex by today's passage of the Closing the Loopholes Bill. How could adding this complexity possibly improve our productivity? Call to the Treasurer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'm very grateful to the member for Curtin for her question and also for her interest and her engagement in the employment white paper that the government released uh, not that long ago. Uh, I do believe uh, that the uh, lift in living standards that we desperately need as a country in the coming years will come from a more productive, more competitive, more dynamic economy. Uh, and I believe uh, that the overwhelming majority of employers and employees and communities want to find a way to strike better agreements Order. to get stronger wages growth and stronger productivity growth and less conflict so that we can prosper together. Uh, I don't believe uh, that the path to productivity in this country is to make people work longer and harder for less. Right. And here's where I depart, Mr Speaker, from those opposite uh, in their approach to industrial relations. And if you think about the closing the loopholes bill that was before the House and which I'm proud to say passed through this place earlier today, and I pay tribute to the minister and to the cabinet and the government for the effort that went into that, is that we will not get more productivity in our economy by letting wage theft go scot-free. We won't get more productivity in our economy if we make it easy for people to undermine agreements in our economy, agreements that are struck in good faith. We can't see those undermined. Undermining those agreements or letting wage theft go unpunished won't boost productivity in our economy. Uh, we won't get uh, productivity growth uh, by treating workers as some kind of easily discarded input into the prosperity that we want to create together as a nation. Now we know from the last decade, Mr Speaker, of deliberate Order. wage suppression and deliberate wage stagnation that that's not the path to better productivity outcomes. We know that because a decade of wage stagnation and suppression came hand in hand with the worst decade for productivity growth Order. in the 60 years that these records have been kept. So we won't get productivity growth through harsh industrial relations, but I'll t I, I will tell the House and the member how we will get productivity growth in our economy after a wasted decade. Uh, we will get productivity growth in our Order. economy by making it more competitive. That's why we've got the process around competition. We will get productivity in our economy if we invest in our human capital, in our skills base, if we make it easier to adapt and adopt technology, if we make it, e make it more effective to deliver care in our economy. We'll get a more productive economy if we get the energy transformation right. These are the ways. These are the ways that a forward-looking, modern economy delivers productivity growth, which has been absent for too long, because our vision has been unnecessarily narrowed by those opposite Order. to Treasury industrial relations.